to one go Where'd all the hoes go? I don't like being alone You know, you know, you know Just fall asleep Hey, call it a day You, you can't help me And neither they nay Whispering in the corners, hearing all the thoughts. Cause it's what we do best. We feed the minds of the ones who are lost. Whoa, 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 yeah, yeah. Buster Scruggs on the guitar, shredding again. We got. Zay texting away, we have no idea what he's up to. <laughs> no, we don't know, we don't know. Ooh, he's so mysterious. And the body next to him is just so damn talented. Cause I am digging these riffs. Oh yeah, baby, come close now. Ain't nobody gon' hurt you now Yeah, feel the vibrations of this guitar mm. Oh, it's wavy Oh, so wavy You know I cannot stand I l literally cannot stand Hey, but you're sitting That's why you can't stand. Because of this. Say it's on tender now. <laughs> Catching a flying man. <laughs> Sparking up something new. What is it, though? What is what? Turns out she. She was a catfish. And Plot twist. Now Zayd's all alone. You're creating false narratives here. What do you mean about false narratives? <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? All what do you mean? Talk about is truth. <laughs> Down here in the stew. Yeah. Oh, give a huge shout out to the podcast of the century. You know how it do. Episode 61. Is back live. Episode 61, back in the stew, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what to do. It's November already. Just in time for Christmas. This guy know it's in December. <laughs> it is? Do you remember the 21st night of December? <laughs> At least you come that's, prepared. That's true. I I'm can't hate on, on how advanced always prepared, prepared he is. Yeah. In what way? This He's ready for Christmas. Look at that Christmas spirit. Bro, Thanksgiving hasn't happened yet, but Thanksgiving already got canceled. Apparently. Yeah. Everything's getting canceled. So, according to Governor Newsom, we're hitting the purple tier. No, no, no. Can, let's just say Newsom. Newsom. He, he doesn't deserve the, the label well, he's, governor. Isn't he going to get recalled? Well, I mean, he's still did... on the table. Well, I he's see a still... lot of people yeah, yeah, dude. wanting that. Every time I go to work, I'm always there's always a booth, and I'm just always signing it. <laughs> recall this Yo, motherfucker! Are we going to recall this motherfucker or what? <laughs> he's destroying our liberty! Give us our well, rights Dude, back. isn't it funny how everyone wants to talk about, like, free will and my free will? You guys think you live free? Do you actually think you live free? Well, didn't we talk about that on episode 60 a little bit? Yeah, kind of. In a weird way? Yeah, but Are today I gave more slaves? thought. No, I was, I'm just like, okay, don't take away our free will. But it's like, we don't have free will either way. No. <laughs> no, you really don't. You yeah, don't believe free in will. free will? Free will would cause chaos. Yeah, it would be. 
it'd just be complete anarchy. Yeah. Because if there was no reason to follow rules because they don't exist in the first place, like people are yeah. going to make the wrong decision the majority what, of the are, time. Are we talking about free will here on the personal level or? No, no, no. We're talking about like with. On a societal level. Societal level. Yeah. No, free will is a thing. I, I don't know. It, I don't know. I think it's interesting when people are like, everything's predetermined, man. But is it though? I think it's a bit of both. I guess if you believe in, there's a religious and a scientific perspective of it. Mm-hmm. Like if you believe the um, dimension of time is already predetermined, then yeah, I guess you could say everything is already written. But if you believe time is a dimension that's constantly being created in the present, then no, it isn't predetermined and there is free will. And there's also the religious perspective where some people say, oh God, he knows everything. He knows the plan. Yeah. You're like, okay. So there's no free will. But then I asked a religious teacher about that and a religion teacher in high school about that. And he was like, no, God is the conscientious observer. I was like, okay, so. Interesting. I was like, what does that mean? Like, I know what it means, but I want to hear what he means by it. And he said, "Um, imagine you're strapped to a train track. Okay. And I was like, bold example. For a high school yeah, student. Yeah, yeah. He's like, imagine you're attached to a train track and there's a train hurtling at you mm-hmm. and God is on the hill or on a hill far away. <laughs> he can see everything that happens and he knows what's going to happen, but he doesn't intervene. My question is, why the fuck are you strapped on a train track? <laughs> yeah, how'd you get there? No, no. I don't, well, oh, yeah. I think the real question is like, well, if, kidnapped? well, if God knows everything that's going to happen, is life still... Is it still free will at that point? Well, I, yeah, I don't because know. Because the ability from to his choose, perspective, yeah. it was like, oh, God, God just watches everything unfold. And I'm like, but God's all knowing, right? And he's like, yeah, of course. And I yeah. said, so God knows what's going to happen next. And he was like, uh, <laughs> I see what you're doing. <laughs> uh, you, you wise guy. Uh, we'll talk after class, you know? <laughs> No, it was after class at that oh, point. Okay. Yeah, we were already talking after class because yeah. I just walked up and I'm like, "Yo, I got a question." Yeah. So I still never got a full answer from that. Well, I just think it's just you make decisions. Yeah. God that's... gives you two options, you know, or three options, whatever you want, you know, and it's the decisions that leads to your yeah, out- you have, the outcome. You have everyone has the power of choice. Yeah. Unless you're like a North Korean refugee. For example, someone that offers you refu- someone offers you refugee narco. Mm-hmm. Or speed, LSD. You have an option of saying yes or no, don't you not? And then from sometimes there, sometimes you do. Sometimes you from don't. there, sometimes that's you where get the drugged in a club. Well, yeah, if you're well, saying a narco, why are you in a club? To if begin you're with. saying a narco's offering it, like, <laughs> yeah, that's, you, that's you, a. There's some circumstance to go with that. We uh, have the vat of acid here, where we can decompose your body, or you can just take this. It's up to you. Free right? will. Yeah, yeah. free will. <laughs> you have the chance, dude. Know. I have some. I have <laughs> some. Funny, <laughs> I have some funny ass shit to talk about right now. Who is Will? If it's Will, not funny, I'm gonna be a little upset. Who is Will, and why do we want him free? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I don't know what he did to get locked up. However, but, way he did. Yeah, it's but, but funny because though. it's ridiculous. Okay. Okay. Now this is from our previous guest Kai. Okay. Where I found it on his Instagram story. Did he he but, posted it. I think I saw you. I saw this on his Instagram story. Right. Are you guys familiar with critical race theory? Critical race theory? No. Can you explain that? I've heard of it, but I could not tell Critical you. Critical so, race theory. let me give you the definition. Okay. It's a theoretical framework in the social sciences uh-huh. that examines society and culture as they relate to categorizations of race, law, and power. Hmm. Um, anyways, there's this funny thing about Asian people that they came out with. And Who's they? Uh, yeah, that's... SJWs. Oh, I don't fucking know. Well, that's why I'm asking. Because okay. it's like... The so, clowns who created so this. So many people say, oh, they did it. But it's like, who the fuck is they? Can <laughs> you introduce po- me to they? Okay. Like, <laughs> so someone someone that made this meme. Someone that's a jokester. It's oh. not even a meme. It's serious. No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, real, it's a real thing. This okay. is not a meme. Okay. So, okay, this is the title. Fun with critical race theory. Asians. Who are considered, quote unquote, people of color. Blacks. We get a check mark. Hispanics, we get a check mark. Native Americans, another check mark. Now they excluded Asians. Mm, I see where this is going. Okay. So, so here's their explanation. Yeah. No, Asians are not people of color. Here's why. 
Asians outperform all other groups, including whites. There is a general industry. There is a general belief that Asians, the collective success of Asians, is because they, on average, are industrious and have intact families and high academic aspiration and achievement. According to critical race theory, the real reason for Asian success is that Asians have proximity to whiteness and are complicit in upholding white supremacy. Asians are white adjacent and enact whiteness and therefore benefit from white privilege. I'll leave it at that. So mm. you're so basically what that article or that little post on this guy's story did was it nullified all of the um there was a bunch of protests about white privilege and Asian people were saying that Asian privilege isn't a thing. You know, and it was like there's all these protests going on a while ago, so they're essentially nullifying all of those protests. Or at least that post yeah. is. And I think that's kind of that's highly offensive to Asians. Oh, oh, by the way, under that's, that, they that's say unbelievably they underline and bold this. No, this is not racist. No, that's unbelievably <laughs> racist to Asians. Because what they're assuming in that is, oh, they have to uphold this white. Sorry, what was it? It was a white. They mentioned. They uphold the values of it was white something. Upholding white supremacy. Okay, yes. What? Okay. It's a so big you're saying the statement. only reason Asians pe or Asian people are successful is because they're upholding white supremacy? What the hell, Are dude? you fucking insane? <laughs> okay, so what? So Pardon my friend. Did Kai post this as, a, as like a joke? No, this is legitimate from, from whoever these SJW yeah, so liberal yeah, types yeah, yeah. who are like... Gotcha. That's unbelievably racist for them to assume that. Yeah. By the way, I just completely discount all social sciences. Well, okay, I wouldn't do that just out of the gate, but it's like... I mean... Because this kind of shit pops up. <laughs> no, that's, that's just insane. Because, I mean, like, just the first thing that my mind goes to is World War II. And I know it shouldn't, mm -hmm. but it does. Because, I mean, we obviously went to war with at least one specific group of Asians, being the Japanese. And on top of that, we put Japanese people who were in, in America, some were born in America at the time, into concentration camps of our own. Or their internment camps, as mm -hmm. we called them over here. <laughs> So it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're really upholding the values of white supremacy, or at least the racial group that, you know, oppressed them literally. Yeah. So what the fuck is that? Secondly, you're discounting, the, you're discounting that Asians are unbelievably intelligent. Yeah. And hardworking. Hardworking as hell. Yeah. Put intelligence aside, hardworking. Yeah. They just... They're disciplined. I dude. mean, even if, like, let's just say this. If it's not the smartest person in the world, like, let's just say hypothetically there's an Asian, and they don't have like an unbelievable level of intellect right it's just a normal asian they're hard working so they're going to get better grades that's just how it is like they put in yeah, more right. effort because that's what they put emphasis into you're right that's what's important yeah, and it stems from the culture it's yeah. really the culture is very disciplined that's what you see Am that's I wrong? ridiculous i mean you've, you've been to japanese houses yeah of course the cleanest fucking houses you've ever seen oh they're beautiful dude they're beautiful yeah which by the way can we just it's a way of can life. i just say this right now hmm. no household there should be no household where you're allowed to wear your shoes inside. inside. I get you. At all. Yeah. There's no need for it. They're dirty as hell. You're literally out and about stepping onto these. <laughs> yeah, think about it. Just stepping on the infested shit. streets. Bro, we step going on into a public piss bathroom. puddles. Yeah. In our own office. So why, would, why do you want that shit in your room? I don't know. Yeah, that's what I get. Well, in your room, yeah, that, that's. Look, dude, front door, that's it. Yeah, just leave them there. Yeah. Build a shoe rack. You're right. Or hell, maybe the garage, if you got one of those where you can enter your house to the garage. Yeah. You know what amazes me about this? I don't understand how people wake up in the morning and from the moment they're awake to the moment they go to bed, they just think about race. Everything is viewed from the lens of race. I don't know, dude. Unless it's Forza, I'm not interested. <laughs> what? <laughs> race. Oh my God, bro. Come on, dude. Get, get, I should get slap you for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, but I was clever. <laughs> Thank you, sir. But how Thank do you, you operate? It's, I, it's either I'm oppressed or well, this is not going my way. I'm a victim. Well, I think it's ironic that a lot of people who put such a heavy emphasis on not focusing on race, that's what they solely focus on is the individual race. Yeah. The people who are fighting racism are actually it's racist. It's ironic, dude. Yeah, it's the biggest form. It's one of the greatest <laughs> one of forms of irony in our society right now is it's like all these people that want to be all inclusive, yet what they do is they put labels and they yeah. marginalize these groups solely Life based on the color circle, of their man. skin. It's mm. bizarre. It's like um just a bunch of clowns. Like people there's a very 
common way that you should treat people yeah. in my mind at least and who gives a shit about race judge based on character and i know that sounds like some it's middle what martin school, luther king said back some, in the 60s or 70s like yeah fucking... it sounds like middle school bullshit but you're right mlk said yeah. it and why can't we follow suit it makes sense yeah why should i have to worry or why do i even need to consider race into the equation yeah as far as i'm concerned it's a human being yeah. So the fact That's that the you're even putting an it. emphasis on it in the first place is already kind of alarming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, yeah. I understand if you're using it or at least describing race or talking about race to emphasize problems within a community mm -hmm. or how they feel as if they're not getting a fair share. That's fine. But when you use it to marginalize people or put them into boxes, that's when I start to have a problem. Yeah. That's kind of like the story we heard the other day. Do you guys remember? Which one? Some guy at a liquor store. He went to buy something, and then the guy was being a dick. So he's like, "Why are you being a dick?" And the guy was like, "What the fuck?" Oh, yeah. And then uh, he's like, "He's like, no, don't call me that." And he's like, "And he's like, well, I'm gonna call you for what you are, based off your character." And then the guy started getting like all like racial profiling, you know, like he was just kind of <laughs> like, like, "Oh, it's probably because of the color of my skin and all this stuff." And he's like, "No." You're just a dick. <laughs> You're just an <laughs> asshole, bro. Sorry, you know, I got treated like that. I acknowledge that, and I'm telling you to your face. <laughs> That's all it is. And the guy was like, oh, oh, oh. You know? Yeah. You dude. could be rainbow colored four foot 11. I don't give a shit. You're just an <laughs> asshole, right? <laughs> rainbow colored. You could be fucking blue for all I care. The just hell? Like... What, do, what do I call this person? A Pokemon? We already use Smurf. <laughs> a Pokemon. <laughs> Hey, be Digimon. Careful. Be careful. Smurf is offensive to a lot of people. That's true. That's, that's an unbelievably offensive post to Asian people, though. Yeah, very. Like, I saw yeah. that on his page, and I couldn't tell if it was a joke or not. Yeah. It was like one of those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? It's one of those things where it's like, what? does he agree or disagree, first of all? Second of all? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I would I mean, assume like, he completely disagrees because I mean, like, he's common sense. By these people's logic, and when I say these people, I mean like the SJW type that's obviously writing articles or posts about yeah. shit like that. Do they not just stop to think no. about what they're doing? Because it's all emotion. I mean, like, do they realize what they're doing is marginalizing a group of people mm. and, I mean, hypothetically oppressing them, saying that, oh, yeah, the fruits of your labors aren't derivative of the fruits of your labor. They're, <laughs> so they're inspired. <laughs> they're inspired by white nationalism. It's and that's all you guys are known for is it's supporting white nationalism. What are you talking it's about? It's the folly How? of human nature. That's just pathetic, though. <laughs> That's just so pathetic, bro. Once you get like, locked into an ideology, all rational bets are off. It's just the way God. it is. I don't know. You want to talk? You know what? Let's let's switch up the topic. Wait, wait, wait. First, we have to say, listen, we love all types of people: Asian people, yeah, black people, short people, we've tall said, people. Yeah, we've said this before. We love all people. Just be a good person. That's the bottom That's line, all. really. You know, just be nice. I'm a good person. I just Do want to be kind. That's Don't it. be nice. Be kind. Give people the benefit of the doubt we unless have, they break it twice. <laughs> True. True. Did you say what? <laughs> chicken no. over beef? What no, you no. Uh, chicken Zayd, over Zayd and I have a beef over, oh. um, we have a beef over nice versus kind. Oh my God. Get yeah. the hell Bro, out of here. Bro, nice is so for dumb. people who are doormats. Okay, but kind. Yeah, and being... that's, there's a difference. There is a difference. I know this is really stupid, a uh, stupid argument, but that's your opinion. Oh. It is my opinion. There's a definition for nice, and if you choose not to go by that, I'm sorry. Wait, hold on. But hold your on. argument's this... already hold on, hold invalid. On. We'll leave Master Alan Watts to decide for us. Oh, by the way, did you know today, 47 years ago, is when he died? Yeah. Alan Watts. No, I did not because I don't know his birth date or his death date. That's a fun fact. Rip to uh, one of the peace. philosophical goats. 47 years of okay. restful sleeping, hopefully. So Alan Watts. Meditation. Clearly states, compassion instead of power. That doesn't really settle our debate. I know. <laughs> I that know. That was a nice quote. I, that, was a, that was the closest thing I can... We it had sounded a, nice. Off <laughs> air, kind. about an hour and a half ago, we had a debate on humility. Yeah. I'm a firm believer that humility is overrated. Okay. Because when you search the definition of it, it's a low estimation of oneself... Or like it's almost kind of like putting yourself down. He hates the definition because it clearly states that you are um, taking yourself down a notch just so you can, because that's a part of humility and humbleness. 
I think they should. I so think you're taking people, your character well, down low. I think. I don't think that's true. Here's the thing that they don't tell you outright about humility. Yeah. From Explain the outside it, perspective, I could agree with you. I could say that humility is designed to essentially, in a way, kind of shit over the hard work that you did. You're like, oh, it was nothing. Mm -hmm. But the thing about somebody that's humble or somebody that has humility is that they're already aware of how good their work is. Yeah. Yet they choose not to boast about it. Jordan Peterson. And I feel like that's more powerful. Yeah. Think about Jordan Peterson. It's a great example. Well, it's a tricky thing because I think... Um, oh. I'm trying to delineate what I mean by humility. I'm I'm more on the side of like, okay, I much prefer irrational self confidence over humility. Well, but that's that doesn't mean that I'm going to be an asshole to people, and that I'm going to boast about myself all the time. Yeah, it just means that at the core of my, at the core of myself, it's just confidence. Yeah, and if you if you want to aspire to anything great, you have to have that. That's what I told and, you earlier. I, I said humbleness. Humility is still on the bounds of humbleness. Just humble yourself. Now you can say like hard mean, work and discipline is a humble. form of humility, I guess. Well, I think I think um, there's a level of maturity that comes with humility or yeah. being humble. I think maturity is the word I like. Maturity is a good word. Well, I mean, humility is a form of being mature in a sense. Because at least from the way you're describing it or how I'm perceiving it, you're like, I'm just going to gloat about all my shit because I know it's good and I'm confident about it. Yeah, that's cool. But I mean, that's when, you not do, when, you go, I mean. when you go about it that route, you, it kind of feels like you're the kid on the playground that has to talk about how cool he is. Yeah. Or the I, person yeah, that's I can never see that been, perspective. You're the person that's never been tagged and you fucking know it. And you, yeah, you know, you know, so it's just like, hey, I, it was work. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it was hard, but I did my best and hopefully you guys enjoy it. And that's more what I mean. I'm not like, you know, boast like an asshole, but... That's kind of what how you're coming off. At least to me. Fair enough. Yeah. So I'm just trying to... I'm just trying to let you know. It's a formula. It's a form... It's a mixture of, of both. I don't know. I guess with... Just like anything, practice. You know? Balance. Because you're a self-aware person, right? No. No? Not at all. I, I would I'm like joking. to, I'd yeah, like to believe the hell, that man. I am, but I mean. Yeah, you are self-aware. I can see it in, in the, you guys' actions. That's why I'm like. It has its I'm limits. Like, oh, you're not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as long as you're self-aware, dude, you can, you can catch that shit. There you can be a, like, yeah, you know what? I did act like I was above everyone, so let me just. Uh, it's not really stooping down. That's the thing. It's no, just, it's not here, stooping here, here's, down. Here's my lesson. Well, that's only because I looked at the definition of it. Talk less, do more. Yeah, okay. Literally, you do not have to ever explain yourself. True. But when you talk, everyone listens. And that's why you guys are not okay. <laughs> hey, I wanted to, I want to switch it up a little bit. To what? No, music? Um, no not music. <laughs> I, <laughs> so, I don't watch a lot of TV, mm -hmm. and that's not a boast thing out of the gate. I mean... Because what's subsidized TV for me is YouTube, right? Which just it's basically new, it's TV. young people TV. It's that's TV. All, that's all YouTube. It's, TV. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's young people. It's TV, TV, but you know what you want to watch. It's TV exactly. on a computer. Yeah. yeah, that's all it is, and it's more catered to you. Mm -hmm. And there's less advertisements. Yeah, they're still there. I like how we bitch about Bro. <laughs> ten seconds of advertisement for like a twenty-five minute long video. Yet, if you were to watch a TV show that takes up a 30-minute time slot... Just like, skip, 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 I skip. I shit you not, like, 12 to 15 minutes of it are just advertised. Here's what's even stupider. The fact that we still haven't subscribed to fucking premium. <laughs> you know what's even stupider? The fact that you haven't even subscribed to the... It's officially 2 a.m. Yeah, that's true. On YouTube. What is wrong with you? Come on, guys. Guys. <laughs> subscribe. Guys, listen, it's easy. It's simple. It's a big red button that's... Five-star review. YouTube Anything less is unacceptable. YouTube.com. Search up officially 2 a.m. But one word that being said this does have to do with advertisements and um it's advertisements for drugs drugs and not the Dr company drugs not yes drugs <laughs> advertisements for drugs uh <laughs> drugs and stonks <laughs> no it's an advertisement for drugs on youtube and um Am I correct when I say this? The United States is like one of the only countries in the world that you're legally allowed to advertise drugs in or like 
medical drugs? Uh, U.S. and I think Australia. Which, why? Well, because the companies run everything here. Well, my point is, it's like, uh, well, obviously, yeah, yeah. They, they fought for that shit. But I mean, like, isn't the whole point to have your doctor prescribe it to you? They're like, ask your doctor about Otesla, because that's the first one that comes to mind. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what the hell Otesla does, but <laughs> it's just like, talk to your doctor about Otesla. <laughs> no, if, if you need Otesla, like, your doctor should know about it already. Yeah. He would prescribe it to you if you have a problem that makes sense for it, mm -hmm. right? That's not even the thing I wanted to talk about. The main thing I wanted to talk about is how in these advertisements, there's always that <laughs> huge list of side effects. <laughs> Where it's like um, At one and possible and a half side speed. effects of Otesla are where it's like 60 to 70 percent of the whole ad is just the bad shit that could happen. To the, you. Yeah. Not just the bad shit, the worst shit that could happen. To where it's you. like uh, stop taking Otesla if you uh, experience symptoms such as diarrhea, excessive sweating, diarrhea, brain vomiting, tumor, nausea, cancer, uh, like yeah, <laughs> aggressive cancer. types of cancer, cancer what? Or, <laughs> or possibly death. But the one that cracks me up because it's very recent, at least in terms of drug advertising history and they lead with this now do not take and i'm using I'm sorry otesla but it's like the only one i can think of mm. it's like do not take otesla if you're allergic to otesla how the <laughs> how the hell do i know if i'm allergic to otesla if i've never taken it well obviously you you take it how you just take it well that's the crazy shit it's not like pharmaceutical companies give a fuck yeah. well you know why they do that right why it's to cover their ass. Oh, yeah. Because if it turns out you are allergic to it, a while ago, you used to be able to sue them for it. But now they took that away yeah. from you. Now it's clearly Some stated. shifty, shifty mofos. Look it's at like, that. what are we doing? What are we doing? Like, that's, that's asinine. Why are we even advertising it in the first place? <laughs> it's basically saying, like, hey, don't take our drugs if you got problems with it. The thing you haven't taken yet. Don't yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, and by the way, if you're not allergic to it, all this bad shit might happen to you. <laughs> I'm done with the dude. <laughs> what are we doing? They're just so dumb. What are we doing? I don't are know, you depressed? Man. That's why I like Take Comedy Central. Pill. Comedy Central has made a 10 minute bit where it was a commercial like that. And it started off all like, are you experiencing nausea while driving? And then this lady's like driving through the neighborhood and she crashes. And then they show you like the, the pill bottle. And it was just like introducing this blah, 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 blah by a pharmaceutical company, right? And then all of a sudden, everyone around her starts turning into zombies and they all start eating her flesh. They're like, have you experienced this? You know? And then uh, they're just like making fun of it so hard. And then they start listing literally like the 700 ingredients or the 700 things to look out for and not take this medicine. If you're experiencing this, that, 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 that. Are you a painter? Do not take this. Are you... <laughs> Well, of course, we know it comes like, down. Have you ever been on a sailboat? Don't yeah, take yeah. This. <laughs> it comes. Of course, it comes down to money. But what's what's sad and hilarious at the same time is that they they give you drugs. They give you new drugs to cover the symptoms of the old drugs. Yeah. So okay, here you take this. Yeah. Yeah, it gets rid of your anxiety for a little bit of time, but it might give you cold sweats. Yeah. Now you need to back it up with this. Yeah. And then we need to back it up with this. Yeah. Now the cold sweat medicine gives you this, so we need to take care of that. With this. Now you're fucking popping five different bottles. Yeah. It's, it's like, oh yeah, let's take yeah. medication. To, let's take medication to um, downplay the negative <laughs> symptoms that I'm getting from this other medication. Yeah, yeah. But this new medication gives me different symptoms. Mm -hmm. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. And that's all strategically planned by them. Of course. Yeah. I mean, Th maybe, <laughs> maybe unintentionally so. Like, I think, I think it just... I think it's intentional. Well, I think what happens is people make these drugs and they have negative side effects and then other people... I guess, yeah, it would be by design in a sense then because it's just other pharmaceutical companies or maybe even the same ones are just making new drugs to counteract symptoms from different drugs. It's more money. That's so stupid. That's like drinking so much caffeine and then balance it out with, like, a ton of weed. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's like, and then you're I'm just so... like, I'm a, I feel normal. Okay, then. Why, why do either? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I took way too much Adderall. Now I'm going to do morphine to just to just oh melt, dial it back. Like yeah, oh, that's yeah. like um. Hunter S. Thompson was describing his uh, daily routine. Joe oh Rogan read it God. off, and he was talking about like how much cocaine and like he was taking during the day and drinking and all this crazy shit. And then it was something where it was like six o'clock at night. He smokes weed to take the edge <laughs> off. 
You're like, what? What? <laughs> I kid you not, cocaine every 45 minutes. Straight what up. What the hell is going on with that guy, dude? He rages. Yeah. He lit, you know what? That man had free will. <laughs> like, he did everything he wanted to do. Whether you liked it or not, he did it. Yeah, it was definitely a character. No surprise Johnny Depp hung out with him. Yeah. Is, Johnny is Depp. Hunter S. Thompson still alive? No, he's very dead. Yeah, I, I thought so. I don't know why he even asked. Johnny that. Deep here. Going Johnny yeah, Deep. Going Johnny Deep hat? tonight, boy. What? Why are you taking it off? So he disapproves of our pagan Christian ritual. I promise I do not have lice. You want to wear it? Paganism. I mean, if you don't got lice, like, toss it this way. Ha! There we go. Santa Clown in well, the stew. Well, you sold me when you said you didn't have lice. That's what got me. Yeah. Santa Clown in the stew. Dude, you look like Santa's elf. <laughs> in other words, Santa's slave. Oh, damn. Why do you got to word it like that, bro? Because it's true. You think Santa takes yeah, care I mean, of his not, elves? You're not wrong. You're not wrong. He might. Slave labor, dude. Maybe. Wait. Dude. Okay, I'm sorry to burst the bubble of a bunch of kids that potentially watch the podcast. No, but oh no kids will watch this podcast. I know, but I'm you just know why? Saying, it's a joke, Zay. It's because they listen. They don't watch. But Santa ain't real. So why are you What if we actually did have a demographic of like five to ten year olds watching the two AM podcast? We got a problem then. We do so, have a something's problem. Something's wrong if that's the case. We did put rated R, by the way. Yeah. Well, saying, those are some sophisticated ass five or six year olds, oh, yeah. man. They, I yeah, kinda, they can I, understand I kinda, big topics. Bro, I kind of want children, them watching them. Children know a lot these days, man. And it's weird. Yeah, and they it's they know weird. a lot about the wrong stuff. That's the thing. Yeah, like uh, I'm not yeah, saying dude. that this is a wrong thing, but it's like the sex ed that kids are getting, and at such a young age. Yeah, is through TikTok, bizarre. Through TikTok, Literally, no, at dude. school in California. What are they? No, teaching I'm talking them? about the. Stuff. No, they're teaching like the entire sexuality spectrum to kids that are in like first and second grade and yeah. shit like that. It's like way. Oh, younger like all the than... fantasy bullshit. What do you mean? Fantasy. What do you mean by spec by spectrum? No, like human sexuality, like non-binary, um, condoms, gender. Or what? What is it? Uh, gender fluid. Yeah, all the fantasy yeah. bullshit. Like, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Protection. Gladly call it that. No, but they're like teaching them all about that shit, and it's like, wait. So for you to describe that to a group of children, they have to be aware that you have some form of attraction mm -hmm. to the opposite sex or the same or the non-gender specified <laughs> sex or whatever. Like they have to know that there's an attraction there. And that it's going to be sexual at some point. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're essentially teaching all these first graders sex exists for starters, right? And then you can love whoever you want. That's fine. I don't, that's okay. Like, don't have a problem with that. But then I guess that leaves these kids in the dark as to how it actually happens. So it's like, why are you even telling these kids about it in the first place? Yeah. Let them figure it out on their own up until sixth grade. That's like the perfect sex ed age mm -hmm. or range in my in my mind. Yeah, because, because they're not going to start fucking at like thirteen. Yeah, you're right. Dude. Some because, might, but because it's not if you like, remember, it's the it like out yeah. like us growing up, right? When was the first time you ever felt like, ooh, like I have butterflies in my stomach, or I have a crush on this person, or whatever? Yeah, we're young. We're young. Yeah. It was like sixth, fifth grade, right? That's when you're around that, that time. Younger than that for me. Yeah. I mean, it's not. Well, it's like around to, that age. I'm not trying to flex, but I'm just saying. It Do was, you know how high this guy's testosterone yeah. was, was when he <laughs> yeah. was in third grade? Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I'm not trying to flex. Like I was into like yeah, girls. Yeah. No, it's um, high T, baby. No, it was just like I <laughs> remember. Was good, ma. I remember it was like, it was like there's something about her. I just don't know what it is. Yeah. You know, but then you later figure out, oh, it's because I like you. Yeah. You, not not like I love or I'm into. It's I like you. Mm -hmm. Do you like me? Yeah. And then we go on that whole party, that whole route. <laughs> no, I, I get you, I get you. But I don't know. When was the last? When was the first time you started thinking about sex? I guess. Can't remember. You can't, you can't remember, but you were you were young, but <laughs> not as not as young as first grade. I can, sure. but I would not like to admit the. Age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably in the same boat. <laughs> I mean, but did you really know what it was? Yes. Yes. Damn. Too much. This guy does want, not want to say it because it was 20 years old. <laughs> it, was, it was 20 minutes ago. Yeah, it was 20 minutes. <laughs> Lost my virginity yeah, half an hour ago. Yeah, we yeah. walked Zayd through the birds and the bees before yeah. episode 61. <laughs> oh, yeah, because, so that's what it is. Because, Wait, really? Yeah, really? because nine more episodes, and you know what that number is. Eight more episodes after this. After this, yeah. <laughs> you just said 60, boy. God, I said take six, this guy I said to a math class. Dude. Nah, dude. 
fucking me up out here. Let's take Saeed back to... <laughs> take your L's. We all take our L's. <laughs> anyway, I'm not a huge supporter of that at all, of, like, teaching them so damn young. Yeah. If you're going to teach them, No, teach because them they'll find out eventually. Yeah, yeah they'll I'm find not, out eventually, but find out at a better age. I'm not against, like, the principle of learning it. Mm-hmm. And essentially how they're learning it. I'm not disagreeing with that system. It's just the age that I have a problem yeah, with. Yeah, the age. The age that they're being taught at. Well, then again, it's like... Let, let humans be curious by themselves, dude. And then bring in knowledge. But here's the... I think nowadays, by the time they hit fifth or sixth grade, they kind of already know everything. Yeah, because of TikTok. Because That's what I was saying. He, here's my like reason for that. It's not just TikTok. It's like I've seen three-year-olds, the age of three, scrolling through their parents' phone. And by the way, this is somebody that I know personally. Their three-year-old was scrolling through their phone. They knew the app that they liked. They went on to YouTube Kids, and they were scrolling for videos they wanted yeah. to watch. Homeboy had a problem speaking. Like, he could talk, don't get me wrong, but he's still, like, a kid learning to, how to properly speak. Still learning how to, like, properly write out full sentences and stuff like that. And he already knew exactly what he wanted to watch. Yeah, his mind is in the wrong place. It, but it's my point is, it's just like these kids already have a greater understanding of the Internet than any other generation has had at that early of an age. Yeah. So it's like they're going to learn about this shit by the time they're in second, third grade anyways. That's true. Endlessly scrolling. Yeah. Which is why I don't believe in kids having phones, dude. I agree, but it's like, or it, depends I, I want it, to you, play it really out. depends where you live. I yeah, guess. but it de- it's also like, like in my case, my parents got me a flip phone that didn't do shit just so they can That's call true. me. That's true. That's it. Yeah. There's no entertainment. Do you remember the, um, I forget what they were called, but it was like those little green phones where they literally, they had like six buttons on them. Four of them were pre-programmed phone numbers. And then one of them was to answer a call and end the call. And wow. that was it. That's. Never got one of those. It was like this little, it was like a phone designed for children. Yeah. Because how many people do they need to call? Yeah, it's just a line. You got your mom, your dad, grandma, whoever, like your third responsible adult, and then maybe your brother or sister or your friend's parents. Yeah. Like middle school makes sense. Who else do you need? Mm-hmm. Honestly, I'm I'm grateful for the time for the year I was born because I think that was a sweet spot. That was really before technology got yeah. Now got imagine started. me. Yeah, you you are what three years older? Yeah, yeah. N- ninety four baby. So yeah, I was I, I made it to like the Nintendo Entertainment System and Super Nintendo era. <laughs> like I was fully aware of what was happening. Well, those systems. I, mean, I think the first console that I remember playing. I want to say it was a Sega Genesis. Like, that's where I started. Even though PS2s and PS1s existed and stuff like that. Yeah. I was still lucky enough to experience, like, the cartridge. Yeah. And, like, blowing on it. Yeah. Just to get all the dust off of the yep. pins. And then plugging it in, the whole screen's glitching, and then you just tap it, and it's, yeah. all of a sudden it works beautifully. Yeah. Like, gotta I got to have that experience. Then we did discs. Now everything's digital. But you're kind of right. <clears throat> you and I, because I mean, you and I are closer in age than, yeah, you and I are yeah. slightly closer in age. So we got like the one generation where it's like, yeah, we had um, smartphones, but they weren't that great. Like using the internet on them sucked. The YouTube app was okay. Like it did its job for what YouTube was at the mm-hmm. time. Like people forget that YouTube was. I'll give you an idea. I was, I was so excited to either get. Uh, a Motorola Razor, yeah, or yeah. or the the Flip Sidekick. I thought the Flip Sidekick was the shit when I first saw it in middle school. There was one that mm-hmm. I thought was super bitching, the and keyboard. it's a really bad phone. Now that I think about it, it was called the Juke. Oh What's God, the Juke? yeah. Who makes it was that? A, it was like a I, tiny I, I slim it was, uh, Motorola. It was like a Twizzler of a phone, right? <laughs> yeah, and it was just it's basically imagine this right here. This is your phone? No, point it to the screen. Point it to the camera. So yeah. This? Yeah, like cut the dimensions of your yeah. iPhone in half. Really? Yeah. Or just, vertically. let's just say... Uh, the juke. Cut your phone into four pieces vertically, right? You take one of them, that's your phone. And what it does is it pops open like that. And someone just texted me, which is crazy. But <laughs> no, it was, it was like... What the were... hell is that thing? Yeah. So basically, it was like... um. 
take two of your fingers and just go like that. That's how wide the phone is. Yeah. And the whole point was um, it would like slide open like this, right? If I can try to demonstrate this, it was like yeah. So it's <laughs> it's like, got like a CD looking navigation it was thing in the cool middle. Cool because it was like a um, it was almost like a um, like a, a switchblade. Yeah. yeah. It was like and it was yeah. open. You're ready to go. Hello. Yeah. Let's call my dad to pick me up. <laughs> and it was uh it was like a big feature of the phone was that you could import <laughs> late. MP3s onto it, I think. <laughs> like you could have your own MP3s almost like an i like an iPod. Yeah. That's what was cool about it, because that thing swiveled. I yeah, totally forgot volume. about iPods. Wow. Isn't that trippy? Yeah. Wow. I don't even think they do they even make like the standard iPods anymore? No, hell no. I thought they do. They make like they're these tiny ones though. And they literally just yeah. have a, they have the old 3.5 millimeter. Yeah, they do, I don't think they, they, they do, but anymore. not the OG one. Oh, of course not. Yeah, they got rid of I that. I love that one, dude. No, oh. they have, um, the last one I remember was like the iPod Color, I think. I still think they might make an iPod Touch. They, they still do, yeah. They do? Mm -hmm. But. Which like, let's, uh, let's be real, if, why not just get the iPhone? Yeah, for real. Like. I at least got an entry level because, SE. Because the sure. deal with the iPhone is it's like. If you want it to be a phone, you just get the SIM card for mm -hmm. it. But if not, yeah. It's all good. Same I mean, price. How much, I wonder how much more expensive an iPhone is over an iPhone. Dude, you can get an Touch. iPhone SE for like 300 bucks. Really? Yeah. Yeah, just cheap. get the SE then. They're basically the same thing as an iPod Touch, but you can put a SIM card. Is the SE that, um, was that the iPhone 5 that had like the plastic outer on it? No, no. Like the colored one? No. It's... <laughs> It, Do you know what I'm talking about? It's uh, basically, or was that the no? That I was, was the 5C. That was the 5C. Yeah. I was just thinking. I'm oh like, no, I know. Sean I'm gonna get my kid a burner phone. <laughs> a burner phone? A Boost Mobile? No, my kid's for <laughs> sure getting a flip phone. I don't care if they think it's dorky. <laughs> it's like, listen, when you're out and about, if you're really embarrassed about it, just don't pull it out. Okay. At, <laughs> w at what age do you do you give them the upgrade? Middle school. Okay. Yeah, what you just said there was wise sex advice too. When they hit when they hit sixth grade, <laughs> I feel like that will be that will be an appropriate time. Yeah, I because agree. by the time they're six, they're in sixth grade. I think you can instill in your kid, and this is coming from three people who've never had children, or like who have had to raise children. I mean, actually, you kind of have. You have little brothers. Yeah, but like, I feel I like by the time they're in sixth grade, you can teach them enough. Like, hey. This shit lasts forever, and people will look this up down the line, and, like, everything you do is tracked. Yeah. Everything. Even where you are. It's not tracked by me, but it's tracked by Google. Mm -hmm. So, like, if they track your location on a daily basis, believe me, they keep tabs on everything you do. Yeah. Everything you do. So, it's like, just, just know that it's a powerful tool, but you gotta be careful with it. That's why, if you ever invested in VPN companies, dude... You won big time because who oh, knew yeah. that VPNs would be this big today? I kind of saw it coming. I can. I'm I not, saw I'm it not coming. saying like I can see the future, but it was just like because I always worried about privacy, mm -hmm. and I'm like, is there a way around this? And then VPNs like started to make their way with like Nord VPN. Yeah, it's because we're tech savvy. Thing. That's why. Yeah, we know it. But like I remember like seven years ago, I'm like, bro, this is gonna be a hit because I remember there was uh, Chrome extensions. Yes, where, uh, that's how it started. You know, the ad change blocker. your IP address. Watch Netflix in Spain when you're in Cali or some shit. You know, they have different selections. So it started off like that for entertainment. Pro, which, by the way, pro tip for anybody that has a Netflix account and is tired that some of the shit um, on Netflix is region locked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, just get a VPN, change your location to, to whatever that country is. Lithuania. And voila, mm -hmm. now you can watch all the shit that they have exactly. in that country. Like, for example, I think they still have friends in Spain. But they took it off for United States. I think in Britain they have all the seasons of Rick and Morty. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> See? Yeah. Every every country has its crowd, and I guess the selections are just changing. Yeah. So I think Netflix has lists of like all mm -hmm. the shows that they have in different countries yeah. and stuff like that. Every region is different, man. So yeah, VPNs are the shit. They are. Um, definitely get one if you don't have one. Yeah. Uh, do your research on which VPN, though, because there are VPNs that claim they don't uh, sell information, but some VPN companies do. I, I use Nord, personally. Nord VPN. I would look it up, do more research. I did a lot of research They're good. already, and um, they they seem solid. Okay. I don't have a reason to not trust them. Yeah, because they sell, a lot of them sell information to ISPs. As a matter, also, what they... What does that mean? Internet service providers. Oh. Also, the uh, data that they do manage to keep around, which is, like, basically nothing, mm -hmm. like, they really don't take a lot of 
your tabs like because they don't care to yeah they delete it after a certain period of time and it was like 24 or 48 hours mm. because they have a lot of people using their servers so they need to make up space on them yeah I'm, I'm thinking about switching my vpn tonight nord's good i like nord personally it's really easy to use too mm. it's like the user interface that they got not sponsored by the way we should probably say that <laughs> yeah yeah um although it would be cool i'd like nord personally hit us up um, nord like their UI, their app that their app that they give you for it, it's so easy. Mm. It's like, hey, what region, well, what part of the world do you want to yeah. pretend that you're from today? And then you just, there's like Spain, Britain, whatever. Mm, I'm feeling Netherlands today. I feel like Netflix is going to come up with a workaround because I feel like Nord's VPN, they only have like, I, nah, I don't know. Does VPN was, relate to cryptocurrency at all? Uh, no. I mean, in what sense? VPN, okay. The best way I can describe it to you? Because I think that's the first that... time I came across it. Okay. Do you I know what know. a VPN is? Like, truly? Or not really? <clears throat> or, like, you have Basically, it ch it. does it ch just change the location of no, where you are? No, that's not what it does. Or... So, essentially, what it does is when we have an internet service provider. Mm -hmm. right? Or an ISP. Yeah, an ISP. Um, Spectrum is a big one, you know, for most areas. AT&T, whatever. Cox. Yeah. So, what they do is that when you're surfing the web, all your cookies and history and... Um, every little piece of information is being saved, mm. right? Now, wouldn't you love it if everything was private? Yeah. Like, why the hell do you need to have and carry and conceal my fucking information? So it's like ghost mode? So, yeah, exactly. So what you're doing is you're technically going invisible, but the way to do that is you're getting a virtual private network. There we mm. go. Okay. So what it's doing is that when you're plugging in your router, you have a certain IP address. That is connected to this your, line. Your mm -hmm. computer. Your computer. You have your yeah. own IP. Or your network at home. All right. Yeah. Your own IP. You, whether you connect a laptop, a phone, a computer, does not matter. It's all going to be the same IP. So essentially, when you add a VPN, which is a vir virtual private network, mm -hmm. what it really does is that it vanishes that original IP address and makes the ISP believe that it is constantly changing. Okay. You're in different regions around the world. You're unlocated, basically. Gotcha. So, Pretty therefore, they can't get any information. Yeah. See, now, the, the, the huge deal that happened last year was that, turns out, a lot of VPN um, companies were holding on to information, mm. and they would, uh, based on requests, they would sell information. So, they wouldn't... So, it was like, okay, fuck you. Then why the hell do I have a VPN? You okay. Know? They'd be very sneaky about it. Yeah. So, there's v mm. VPN companies that are like, we promise... You know, like that is our 100% guarantee. You know, we keep it, keep it private. But yeah. One of my favorite things about security or uh, online privacy, mm -hmm. security in general, dates back to this story that happened quite a while ago. And essentially the government approached AT&T and they said, hey, we need records. We need data. We need information. Keeping tabs on terrorists was the original claim. Yeah. And while, yes, they have stopped terror attacks doing that, they're also jeopardizing the security and privacy of every individual that uses AT&T. Mm -hmm. Well, when AT&T got the request, they said, hey, is this like a joke? Because you're basically telling us to break the law. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. they, there are laws in place to protect your privacy from the government, just keeping tabs on you all the time. Mm -hmm. And they said, all right, here's the deal. Unless you change the law... We're not doing shit. And so you know what the government did? They're like, all right, cool. So they just changed <laughs> Change the whole it. law. Just changed yeah. it outright. Got rid of all or a lot of American civil liberties and freedom or uh, privacy, at least. And they're just like, fuck it. We're going to do this now. Yeah. We're just gonna... It's amazing what you can do with power. That's why VPNs are important. Till this day, bro, I still believe that like the face ID and all that shit is just... That's well, just all more information. Now yeah. they have the information of your fucking cheekbones, bro. Here's the thing like, I like about... Even with the mask on. Yeah. No, that doesn't work. It worked it for works a long for time with me? Yeah. It never worked with me once. It worked with me a lot. Really? Randomly. I did not even change my face ID. They allegedly claim that they came out with an update where it does it focuses more tracking based on the upper quadrant of your face, mm -hmm. which is like your just eyes and your insane. forehead. I don't know, but... The way I look at it, at least for the face ID thing, mm -hmm. is that's stored with Apple. 
And Apple actually has a pretty good history of telling yeah. the government yeah. to F to, off. Yeah, like, literally go F yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, Apple's also implemented better security measures as a result of the government breaking into their mm -hmm. technology. For example, another example, terrorism. They got a terrorist's iPhone. They said, hey, we need you to open this. Apple said, no, that violates our terms and services. We're not going to do that. So the government was like, fine, like have it your way. If this guy, if we get any information or if something bad happens, it's on you in a sense. And then like two days later, they're like, oh, just kidding. We figured it out. And Apple's like, what? <laughs> you got in? And so they made even better security measures. Yeah. No, but then again, that. I mean, hackers get better by the, by the second. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's like, it's just an ongoing yeah. game of cat and mouse between the hackers that's, and the people who make the that's software. True. And what's even crazier is now the people that make the software hire the hackers to figure out flaws within the system. Mm -hmm. It's the only way to do it. Which it is, but at the same time, if the hacker's so good that you're hiring them to improve security, hypothetically speaking, I'm not saying it has happened before because I don't know, and I'm not saying somebody who was hired to do this would do this, but hypothetically, couldn't they just put a back door into the yeah. whole new security system? That completely goes under the noses of everybody else in the company because nobody's paying that much attention. Mm -hmm. Millions of lines of code, probably, to get the job done. Just put a little... Looks like something harmless nobody would know. I mean, they could even pay attention, but they might not even have the technical expertise to know what they're doing. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's wild. That's a wild world to yeah. get into. Wild landscape. Crazy, man. The digital frontier. The digital landscape. The digital front lines. Digitize the 2 a.m. podcast. Digimons. The 2 a.m. podcast is wholly digital except for this. Yes. The, the least digital process or part of this process is us making it. <laughs> That's true. Because we are sitting here talking to each other. Or sorry, I, it's just us speaking. Yeah, which I Because we're talking into mics that digitize or at least turn our acoustic yeah. sound into digital information. So literally the words leaving our mouths like... That's as far as we can go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God digital. for the internet. It's wild. Yeah. Just oh, like man. anything else, man, there's pros and cons. Always. <sighs> More pros, though, for sure. Voter fraud is off the chart now. Oh, my God. J you, just accept you, the L at this point. You, just, yeah, just, let's just, move on. Yeah, just, just. A lot of his lawsuits okay. have just been outright dismissed. Yeah. Already, so uh, even even I'm thinking that Biden's he's fighting win. tooth and nail, dude. No, Biden already won. That's that's the thing. Yeah, well, he's a projected winner. Uh, I, I, well, well, what cracks me votes, up? Yeah, the thing that really cracks me up, and uh, somebody was telling me about this the other day. This person uh, was talking to one of their friends, and they were like, their friend was claiming that there was absolutely zero voter fraud, none. Hard to believe. Zilch. And I'm not in favor of Trump winning. I'm not in favor of Biden winning. I really don't like either of them. I think they're horrible candidates, and the fact that we got left to choose between these two is ridiculous. However, that being said, how can you say that there was zero voter fraud yeah, be without realistic. a shroud of doubt in your mind? Yeah. I'm not saying there was enough for Trump to win, but there was still some. It's a big country. We yeah. have like, what, 390 million people? Mm -hmm. Like, there's going to be at least one case. Like, to these like, people who, you know, if you're, if you're pro Biden, pro Trump, it's literally a fight of good and evil. Of like, of, of course there's going to be some shady shit going on. Yeah. From both sides. Of course. I mean, I know people that posted on their Instagrams, it was like shit like, um, it was like, hit me up if you casted your vote or casted a ballot for Biden twice. Like, let's be friends. Essentially, like, if you committed voter fraud, let me know. I'll shout you yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I saw that several times on my stories. And I'm yeah. Like, what the hell? What I'm like, is that, like, really? Is that, is that a something stupid way to make friends? I don't know. Well, I guess in their mind, they view it as a joke. Yeah. Like, but, Most likely. but it's not a joke. I don't know. It's, it's just weird. It's just stupid. The whole thing of, like, the division. You know, I know people that stop being friends with other people just because of, like, supporting Trump. That's or, anarchy. That's like, just stupid, bro. Yeah, let me surround myself with people who think the exact same fucking thing as oh, me. Oh, really? We get along so well, but you voted for Trump? Fuck you. <laughs> 
Like, okay, toss everything out the window? That makes well, no sense to what me. Crack, what cracks me up about a lot of that, too, is especially people that cut ties. Like, I know a few examples where they're like, I stopped talking to this person. It's like, I can understand why you feel like you should do that. But did you ask them why they supported Donald Trump? No, he's a racist sex. I'm like, okay, what about his fiscal policy? What if they just like his fiscal policy, but they hate him as a person? Yeah, I know a lot of people like that. They absolutely hate Trump in yeah. every manner that comes to social aspects. But when it comes to business, they like him over Biden because they don't want to get taxes. Yeah, high. it's where does it benefit you? That's where it is. Right. That's what the, the split was. It was yeah. Just, all the business owners were like Trump all the way. And it's also like there's just a whole bunch of blanket statements being thrown from both parties like on the other. And all that does is like cause more rage under the blankets that you've thrown. It's like a lot of uh, liberals that I know are talking about how um, trickle down economics doesn't work, bro. <laughs> it's proven all. not to work. OK. All right, Mr. Okay, Economist. Yeah, we got it. Like trickle down doesn't work 100 percent of the time. That's fair or at all. Let's just go with at all. It doesn't work. However, to some people, they think that's how it works. Yeah. And also, not all Republicans believe in trickle-down economics either. <laughs> Shocker. Nuance. So, yeah. So why don't you talk to these motherfuckers and realize that you probably have a lot in common? Yeah. You're probably way closer. You have a lot more in common than you do what divides you. Mm -hmm. Divisive. I think divisiveness is probably the number one problem that our society faces right now. I, I think it's just stubbornness. Well, I mean, uh, I would because, assume that they're both because intertwined. that's bred from being stubborn. Yeah, yeah, in a sense, right? Because I understand why, like, somebody who supports Joe Biden or is a Democrat would just outright refuse to speak to anybody that supported Trump. Like, I can understand because it's like, yeah, Trump did all these horrible things, said mm -hmm. racist, misogynist, xenophobic, homophobic, all that shit. Yeah, he said some bad. He said a lot of bad things in his presidency. And just the fact that anybody would even support somebody who says things like that, I get why you wouldn't want to associate with them. Hell, yeah. you know what it is? It's tribalism. There are people who support the Raiders who hate, you know, people who support the Miami Dolphins. Like, yeah, I mean, that's just human nature. We always want to... It's... It's so dumb. Yeah. You see oh, it in you support a different you football sports. team? Yeah, Fuck right. you. Yeah, I get it, dude. If you ain't a Packer, we ain't packing, you know? I think it's like, um, I think it's a uh, Minnesotans. Minnesotans. Uh, people from Minnesota, whatever. Oh, the Vikings? <laughs> yeah, it's like if they hear you're a fan of another team, they're like, oh, sorry for your loss. Sorry for your loss. Like, Go back. Yeah, yeah, the, somewhere I, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, that's, that's funny. You know, they're just talking shit. They're like a little jab saying, I disagree, but I don't really care that much in the, in the first place. <laughs> right. Fucking like, Canadians, eh? I don't know. Go back oh, to I'm Canada. team soccer and I'm team golf. I fucking hate you. It's just so... Oh, team, oh so team golf? I've never heard anyone say that. Or sure. soccer football, you yeah. know, whatever fucking Team comparisons aren't, you want to make. Aren't soccer and football the same? No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> American wait, 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 hold on. Why is it though? Football Why is it that in the United States we call it soccer? Because people are stupid. Because we already stupid. had football. The only reason why I call it soccer is because... soccer because... became more popular No, but I, because back, back home, they call it either football or American football. That's it. Football American. I just call it soccer because it's what I've grown up with. Yeah. I've only grown up in the United States. No, dude, start calling it football from now on. No. No, just... because if I talk to normal Americans, they're going to be confused. Oh, my God. You're They're going right. to think I'm like a running back or something. Just say Spanish. Do, do I look football. like yeah, a running back? Also, at the same time, you're now that American guy that's like, I'm sophisticated. It's football. It's yeah, that, that, football. I, it's, I don't it's a little pretentious. Be like more like football shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cali, what are you doing? Wait, so, are, no. is California officially? What is this stage? What is this color coded stage? The purple shit? is basically back that? to. That's how it was before. I think purple. Really? Yeah, purple was like our initial, and we went to like yeah. red, and I think now we're back at purple. The worst is like code black, which yeah. essentially would be like martial law. I yeah. would guess. Yeah. <sighs> But basically, gyms are going to get shut down again, dine-in. Not the yeah. gains! Yeah, not the gains. No. Well, hey, I'll say this. I went to the gym like two or three times, mm -hmm. and I stopped going for a reason. Let's just put it that way. Because the gym I was going to, maybe out of the 30 people that were in there, excluding the employees, two people had masks on. I was one of the two. I saw nobody wiping shit down. <laughs> Nobody, dude, dude, everything was still just yeah. as grimy as before. You you it's go like, to the wrong gym. My gym was like, everyone had a spray bottle. 
everyone was wiping down. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. That would be nice. Pocket wipes, everything. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So how long is this gonna? How long do you think this is gonna go on for? What? The pandemic. This whole pandemic thing. Another year and a half, to be honest. Because well, clearly it hasn't fallen off after the election. Yeah. Well, no. somebody said from the WHO, and if, and they were like, "Yeah, there's not going to be a return to normal, at least for like a long time." And they're probably right. The thing that cracks me up is they think that they're gonna get a vaccine to fix all this shit. Like, really? Mm -mm. You think a vaccine's gonna call or fix everything? No. Oh yeah, let's just pump an entire population of people full of a vaccine where we don't even know what the fuck the long term effects are. <laughs> Yeah, we're just like, oh, we got it. All right, let's go. Yeah, no, You're good. No, no, no that, that's, that's so stupid. Yeah, uh, it's I, so, I, it's. I'm sorry. It's frustrating. I'm not anti-vax, but, but I'm anti-coronavirus vaccine. At least for the yeah, first two to five years. Yeah, relax, dude. If something's made within months, okay, let's just chill. Because knowing the history of vaccines, I, I believe it takes they, a long time. I believe it years. takes a minimum of yeah. ten years. To like do there you go. So I'm hopeful for the future, but right now we don't need vaccines, bro. Get out of here. We don't trust them. I don't trust them at least. I don't trust the coronavirus ones. Yeah, I trust other ones. Yeah, pretty greatly. Well, yeah, but, because it's backed up yeah. by so many years of uh, history. It's, but I don't know, man. The United States is not in a great place right now. No, and no one wants to listen either. No, dude. Everybody, I think oh, everybody's God, just. Dying, man, I hate man. the people that throw like fits and tantrums. I have a medical condition where I can't wear a mask. Okay, then don't shop. Well, the question. Did you is, think of that? What what, what medical, medical yeah. condition is that? I don't know, but that's just one of the greatest of excuses one. in the book, dude. D name me a medical condition that you can't wear a mask. I don't know, dude. What, imagine they said like type two diabetes. Oh, God. Just don't <laughs> eat that mask, bro. <laughs> Jesus. No, it's like what I, I can't even think of a condition like that. It's just asinine. Yeah. No, you're just being. It's, it's like, oh no, I bro. have a condition where I have to pump oxygen into a mask. You already have a mask on, and you're pumping oxygen. Yeah. And worse <laughs> comes to worse, just throw a mask on over that. Just yeah. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Nothing. Uh, or even even better, just throw on one of those face shield things that yeah. ever, that some people have. Now. I'm sorry, but do you want to die? <laughs> I think this is. I don't think this podcast is going to do as well. Yeah. Because it just feels like a lot of complaining. And oh I know that's God. not what people like to listen to. Hey, but a lot of people like the energy of the room, though. But, so. but the thing is, we got to get it out. Yeah. So, like, the next 20 will be okay. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Solid. Should we, should we end it on a good note? I, I would like sure. to. Sure. Sure. <laughs> that do would wanna, be nice. You want to slap a little uh, What's closing, your good note? A closing song? Closing song. I'm down. For the audience. Let's do it, boy. Should we do a Christmas? You're going to sing along with me? I don't know how to sing, bro. Or you can do the uh, the, the little side comments. I can do the, side. I'm good at side hunting. comments. Um, um, well, let's figure out a little riff. Let's do that riff. <laughs> while, I'm, while I'm riffing, you guys can riff with each other. Yo. I'll give you the topic. Christmas. Christmas, Christmas? cheer. Okay, fine. Oh. COVID. Yeah. Santa slaying up in... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Santa slaying up in here. Santa clowing oh. up in the stew. <laughs> Eddie looks like such a badass with that red flaming guitar. He Would does. You? You're matching with the guitar. Nice. Aesthetics. Reindeer. All I got to 
is Christmas cheer and it's November. Oh, do you remember COVID? <laughs> yes, I do. And you know that I can't ever go back to the no maskness because I get so insecure about my mustache and now I can get to cover it up and no one knows what I look like except the boys at the stoop because when I'm here I'm maskless and we enjoying it <laughs> yeah you know Zade likes my lyricism but you know I totally hate it mm. chilling in the stoop that's how Hold up. Chilling in the stew. Mm -hmm. You know that's how we do when mm -hmm. it's time to come to an end. Mm -hmm. Episode sixty one. You know that it ends here. And sadly we must go But don't you forget that Christmas Is all about the cheer From here on now Close us out Alright guys, you know where to find us YouTube at officially 2am Follow us on Instagram at the 2am podcast We're also available on anchor.fm Spotify Apple Podcast, Castbox, and many more. So please rate us, subscribe, leave a review, like, send us your comments. You know what to do. Thank you so much for joining us, and look forward to episode sixty-two. Yep. <laughs>